We've been refitting the stovall area of our narrow boat since end of summer or something. Is stovall a word? It's like three months ago or something, isn't it? So that means we haven't got any heating on this narrow boat. It's been absolutely freezing, guys. And that's just a tiny, tiny part of what's really been going on on this narrow boat refit that we purchased a couple of years back. This new way of life has been an absolute nightmare. So we were getting quite close to finishing off the tiling on our fireplace but things came to a sudden halt in true crowbot fashion when we discovered that the last tile in the pack had some huge scratches running through it. So after waiting over two and a half weeks for this replacement tile to turn up and be back in stock, we finally had the email. It's there, it's ready for collection. So this is where the story starts and ends. Yeah, things didn't quite go to plan. We've also brought the old scratched panel with us and are hoping to get a refund on that too. I mean, it was only six quid, but. Back at the old, old Murray's. See if they'll give us a refund, eh? So the plan is to come marching out proudly with our lovely new replacement tile. Which one do you reckon I'm gonna come out with? Not looking good. Still the old panel. Looks like we're going back to the boat empty handed. We're given a phone number to ring head office. Seems to be some mix up with the order numbers now. So that didn't quite turn out as planned. I mean, what is it gonna take to get Crowbot heat on this vessel? We've got these last three tiles here. We've got the copper on the walls. We've got to get the Maverick down to sort out the hole in the ceiling. And we've got to do it all along with living on this boat in the cold. Lovely. Well, I can't say that I'm in the best fettle, to be honest. We've just got back from the tile shop, as you've seen, and it's just really irritating. I've been waiting two and a half weeks for this tile to arrive, only to be told after I received a message to say that it was there for us to collect, that in fact it isn't there for us to collect. And when they check my order on their system, they've got a completely different order apparently. It's all looking a bit sketchy to me. I'm gonna give them a call in a minute and find out what's going on because it is freezing in here. We've been living with no heat for ages now, waiting on this one bloody tile. So I can't, I can't say I'm in the best mood. I do apologise. Grumpy Bex, over and out. But I mean, that might mean that the viewers could be in for an extra special Crowbot episode. Because it means that we don't have to sort of do more tiling today. It means that we have to do maybe something extra special, like maybe the living room floor or something. It's not ideal, but that might be what you're getting, guys. We laid all the wooden planks down on the living room floor, but we have yet to actually paint them and coat them to make them like a proper living room floor, so we, we could always do that. So not only is Becca great at DIY, she's also great at complaining to customer services. However, we've driven about an hour and a half up to the branch to collect it, and not only was the tile not there, but actually on their system they have a completely different order. So we've basically been without heating, any source of heating, for the last two months. Um, and waiting on the last two and a half weeks for this tile to arrive so that we can finish off our fireplace with it. Fortunately, I've got a really nice guy on the end of the line and what they've said they're going to do is they're shipping it out today urgently and they're going to send it to my folks' house so it should hopefully be with us over the next couple of days. So that's something. What a palaver! It seems they've got quite a good customer service then. Really. Yeah, they it's were just really good. Been, been a bit unlucky, possibly. Within a few days, we'll have the last tile and we can finally finish this bugger. Because <laughs> it's getting just silly now. A new day and an exciting arrival at Crowbot Towers. So, I've got a little treat for you, Bex. There you go. Oh, thanks. It's so nice of you to carry from the car the parcel that was delivered to my mother's home. <laughs> <laughs> this, ladies and gentlemen, is the tile that we've been waiting for. It's a big moment, guys, and we thought we'd share it with you. So we are hoping that when we open this, it's going to be a beautiful tile that matches in just lovely with the ones we've already put up on the wall and not another horrible scarred one. Bit of a which way is it going to go situation. You could see us cry or you could see us smiling. You told him yesterday when you rang him, didn't you? Yeah. So here we go. So that's, that's great customer service, isn't it? So shout out. Al Murray's tiles. Actually known as Al Murray's tiles, <laughs> but we like to call them Al Murray tiles. Let's get you some scissors. Don't throw scissors at girls. Just don't throw scissors, it's not specifically just <laughs> at girls. You're rich in. Oh, that's 
Yeah, that's it, isn't it? Oh dear. Science. <laughs> that's difficult, isn't it? This is bloody. But yeah. we are going to. We'll get away we're with gonna it. We're going to cut it here, aren't we? Should we just hold it up and check that's the right colour? It's a different colour. Is it? Yeah. These are black. No, it's the same. It might be just from a sort of different vet. So it, it looks definitely paler to me. I think. It is the same, it's just from a different vet. It's going up, even if you do want to let your anger out at Hell's Tiles again. Well, no, to me, when I look at that compared to some of these, it's quite a different colour. Yeah, uh, I don't think it is. It's fine. Anyway, too little, too late, because we're not even going to bother putting this tile on today. So in the summer, we had all this reclaimed wood, and we started to fit out our grubby living room floor with it, in the hope to make it less grubby. We cut it all up, we treated it, and then we nailed it down. But guess what? We never actually painted it did we so the top side is actually untrecked and we just had a big old carpet covering the whole thing just to stop any nasties falling onto it this is another job which is so long long overdue it needs to be done and we'd already started preparing for it as the tile was taking so long I cleared out the whole entire living room it's completely empty in here now I didn't want to film it because I didn't want to let you into my secret uh, recipe Look how empty it is, but we've still got the carpet down. We're going to get this up. It's time for the hard wax oil procedure. Here we go. Fiddies, hard wax oil. Hopefully this isn't in too much of a bad shape. Shoes off, please. Shoes off, please, Becca. She don't want to take her boots off. Come on, they're all, all wet. Socks off, please, Becca. We do not want to get our grubby boots onto our naked floor. Are you ready for something you've never, ever seen before? I don't think we've ever seen it before, have we? Because we've always had to have something sitting on it because we just haven't got much room. Here we go. This is the first time any of us have actually seen what the floor looks like as one whole piece. Because, as you know, a narrow boat is small and you've just got to store things wherever you can. Lovely little hatchy down to the bilges, remember him? So we'll mastic up a little bit and then attempt to watch Bex attempting to open up a tin of paint. I'm telling you, girls cannot open up tins of paint. That's a fact. I'm going to get myself in trouble one of these days, aren't I? It is vital that you have a lint-free cloth at the ready. And now back to attempting to watch Bex attempting to get into a tin of paint. Never get a girl to try and open a tin of paint, in it. That's why I'm doing it and not you. Very, very really painful to watch. Lucky you're not here in person, guys. It's an incredibly painful procedure. Back in. You want the man to come in and sort it out. You know what? There's a big, strong, handsome one next to you. Oh, Tim, next door. No, me. We're up to about five minutes now. She's still tearing her way in. Come here. Oh, there you go. And that's with just using my fingers. Put the oil a stirry stirry. Neatly cut open the bag of paint brushes. And get cracking with our hard wax oil. Here we go with the lint-free cloth. The idea of this is so that it gathers up any excess hard wax oil. We don't want any little lumpy bits, do we? Tie a little bit too hard there. Try and be a little bit more gentle with the cloth. That's it. Whoa! Any excess dribbles, try not to fall into it. Chris doing like his slut drop. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it looks like? Well, reverse slut drop. <laughs> Oi. So me and Chris have decided to put a line down the centre of the boat. I shall live on the left side and he shall live on the right. <laughs> I don't want to be any near her. She's horrible. She's horrid. What a lovely man he is. Final push. Do not worry guys, I know it looks a little bit like a chocolate experiment in Willy Wonka's factory gone wrong. Because this is just the first coat and tomorrow we'll be applying the second one. Weird little movement there. So we'll let this dry overnight. Hopefully the cold conditions won't hinder that too much. And tomorrow we've got to key it so the second coat sits on it nicely. The plan is to have the living room completely finished along with a roaring hot fire by Christmas. Ready for 
favourite second coat. Oh, yeah. So you're meant to leave this to dry for four to six hours. We've left it for over 12. The conditions are cold. It still does look a little bit sort of iffy in areas, but we think it's good enough to go in and crack on with the next steps. Sand time. We're going with a 180 grit sand because Beck says so. Yeah, so basically just in between coats, you just give it a light denibbing and then you whack your next coat on really. Simple as that. All we want to do is just gently in the direction of the grain, just long stroke to just take any sort of imperfections out and also just kind of key it a little bit so that the second coat will just stick nicely to it. Even though it says on the tin you don't need to. But loads of other places says you do. Including the actual official Fidu's website as well. Including lots of woodworkers who I trust. brush marks over here. Also, that is when I was really concentrating, so that's saying something about what the rest is going to look like. I'm winning! Chris has still always been competition, always. Always. So if I was just left by myself to do this, I would have gone hell for leather and there probably wouldn't be any paint left on it. Luckily, under Becca's supervision, I'm doing it properly. <laughs> on the water, one of the most beautiful things about being on a narrow boat. First attempt. There we go. So our man does it. And this is when it started to get a little bit sketchy. Obviously the oil is not going to be eating into the floor anymore as much because it's already got the coat on there. And our living room is seriously starting to turn into Mr. Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. My beautiful chocolate! I mean it's not even funny is it the Willy Wonka thing but in all fairness it is starting to look very chocolate-esque. Bex is a little bit worried. It does look thick and we would like to see the grain in the wood you know we can't see any of that now. But let's wait till the morning to make the crucial decision on if we want to grab the keys to this beautiful narrow boat, take it out of the marina and hand over the keys to Mr. Willy Wonka. Enough of the Mr. Willy Wonka. In the morning, this thing is not going to look like a chocolate bar, all right? It's going to be lovely. Cheers, guys.